Now that we're here, like, we're all safe. We know that. Twelve-year-old Tristan never had a dad pass him a football before. For a long time, he didn't even live with his three brothers. It's like, awesome, I actually have a family. Instead of just bouncing from home to home. Tristan was only five when caseworkers found him, his brothers, and their parents living in a hotel room. Records show the parents were violent, addicted to drugs and alcohol. As their mother disappeared and their dad went to jail, Tristan stayed in 23 foster homes in just five years. One family reportedly locked the children in the garage for hours, even over the summer. What kept him going? Motivation. Keep motivating myself every day. I'd go, well, hope, hopefully a family finds me somewhere. Like, you'd think, who's going to get me? You going to die down here? Or are you just going to rot away? Or get picked up? And I got picked up, so I was one of the lucky ones. These kids are screaming, they, they want families, and they, they want so much to be a part of a family. You probably need to knock out your reading before you go to your tonight. Tammy Dunn and her husband adopted not just Tristan, but all three of his brothers, eight-year-old John, 10-year-old Aaron, and 14-year-old Galen. Chris had been adopted as a child. Tammy never found a family. When I was about almost 11, I got put in my first foster home. Um, spent many years in foster care. You need to find a way to adjust to it um, because a lot of people aren't willing to adjust to you. It, it, they, you find yourself having to adjust to, to them and, the, and their families and, and their lifestyle and, and they don't understand what it's like to constantly be moving so many times and having to go from foster home to foster home. I was so alone. Um, if I had been with my brother and sister, that would have made what I had to go through a lot easier. So after raising two biological daughters, Tammy found the Heart Gallery. From the day we found out about the websites, we were on there um, all day, every day. <laughs> they take such a picture of like, Mom and Dad, where are you? Come get me. And that's what that picture did for me. I kind of poked my head out the door and I was like, honey, what do you think about four boys? <laughs> it was sitting right there and she poked her head out and said, how about four? I'm like, uh, wait, what? <laughs> and then we found out that they were not together at the moment. And I think that's what definitely said, that's it. That's who we, we need to bring them back together and become a family. From the second we met them, it was instant. Ah, it, was, it was just awesome. It was the best feeling ever. And we left there wondering, when can we see you again? Can, can it be tomorrow? Can it be the day after? And from that, from that day on, it was, they were ours, and we were going to be a family. Yeah, when do you want to come here? Today. Yeah? Okay. You can come there today. Chris and Tammy recorded the moment when, after almost a year of visits and phone calls, they were finally able to tell Aaron he could stay forever. You can see how scared he was to believe it. Forever? Yep. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yep. Yes. I'm not going to stay here forever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You don't have to go back there anymore. Is that true? Yes, that is, is true. Nope. That is true. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. It is. We got the phone call today. Then, adoption day. We knew how patient we had to be. We knew that 
It's not about just adjusting to our family, it's about adjusting to their needs and their wants and, their, and, and everything that they need to become safe. You just hold your breath and, okay, let's get through this somehow. Let's just, there's nowhere to go. You're here, they're not going anywhere, you're not going. You, you find a way to survive and get through it. Glove ready? The first few months were like a tornado in the house. And uh, slowly but surely, you know, you look back and you can see the gradual increase in all of their behaviors and the pride they have in themselves now. Aaron is now student of the week, making honor roll and hoping to take music lessons. He's a talented artist and wants to become a heart surgeon. Yeah, I do this because I got, um, that's when I got the idea of being a heart surgeon. So, like, I drew a picture of me taking out the heart of somebody and, like, repairing it or something, helping the person out. He made a model helicopter with the grandfather he just met and bonded with this family member, too. Randy's my best dog. When I grew up, I said I'm going to get a golden retriever and a dog like this. She, I say she's a life saver because she calms me down when I'm mad. She prevents me from arguing sometimes. Aaron just needed to be loved, and he needs to hear, I love you every day. He needs me saying, good night, honey, see you in the morning, sleep tight. It's, it's a need they have, is for more people to open up their, their hearts and their homes to these children so that there are less and less foster kids out there, that they don't have to be moved from place to place to place. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Little John waited his whole life for a dad. Wait, wait, wait. And now follows him everywhere, even helping convert the garage into a family room. We put the tiles down. We like snapped them and um, we put them together because he thought they just go in one big piece, but we had to snap it into like big two by fours. We built the room out there. He did everything from the sanding to the painting to putting the wood floors in to building the bar, everything. And he was so proud. And then the next day he comes walking out with the chair handle. I said, what did you do? Well, I didn't have any more jobs, so I took it apart so I could fix it again. Father and son also built a special tradition. Dad starts off by saying, Who loves you more than me? And I say, nobody. And he says, how do you know? And I say, it's impossible. You know, just even right now, John playing out there with his friends, he never had that. That's what it should be. It shouldn't be thinking about, you know, gosh, you know, what am I going to do? You know, is, is that my mom and dad, are they going to stay my mom and dad? It's like, they don't think about that anymore. It's just mom and dad. I remember we were playing basketball, and I, I, and I said, OK, if I make this shot, you have to call me dad. So I'm like, I learned, okay, don't wait for him to call you dad. Let's get this started right now. And so I missed it, and I was like, ah. Oh. And then Tristan gives me the ball, and he goes, here, shoot it again. But I was like, oh, that gets me all right. God. Tristan can tell you the first time he heard his parents say, I love you. We were at a zoo, and we were just like walking around. And one of them said, it's time to go, okay, see ya. And we were like, I love you, and I was like, fine who love me, like who care about people who are in need of a family. And the first time, he said it to them. They go to bed, which was like 12 o'clock. I was like, I love you, and they're like, I love you too. I was like, wow. I was like, I actually got a response. Yeah. You see, you know, at first four boys that almost gave up and said, their life is so miserable, and now they can't be more happy. They are just, they have just,
come so far in such a short time just by having a family and having us say, this is it, we love you for the rest of your life and we're gonna be a part of your life for the rest of your life and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. No more packing your suitcase, packing your bags and the only time you're ever gonna pack your bags is to go on vacation. <laughs> so, so. They come out in the morning and it's like, hey dad, I love you. And they're always very, you know, huggy and kissing and it's just like, Every little instant just melts your heart, and uh, I just love them to death. <laughs> oh, you okay? Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, you got it out. You all right? Get water. Oh. Oh. He's all right. <laughs>